Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Welcome all, uh, all of you all back to the H&Z show. Very good. Welcome back everybody to the H&Z show. As you all know, we're all talking about the topic of leadership. Yes, Brother Hamza. Yes, this week's topic is very interesting and uh, in case you joined us just recently, we were talking about all the different qualities that leaders should have. Uh, we discussed uh, different people that are leaders within our religion and obviously choosing your leader, leader very carefully and um, very particularly. Obviously, I want to discuss a couple of things and, and, and then I want to give the hadith of, uh, of an imam as well. I think the main thing that I want to say that the task of a leader is to guide men and obviously not men but mankind and obviously uh, you have to, uh, the leader has to demonstrate this by taking these followers to the right path and obviously show them happiness. Imam Sadiq Islam says in one of his hadith which I wrote down, he's saying in very beautifully that knowledge of God is not possible except by the means of knowledge of an Imam or, or a leader. And the Imam is versed in all complexities of revelation and the Sunnah and one whom God will always appoint from amongst the progeny of Hussain, peace be upon him. There you go, the, when you look at leader, the leaders are the one who have knowledge, they carry the truth, they are the banners of our religion and like Brother Hamza said, they guide the movement of man towards perfection. Mm -hmm. I think we have one more call, I think we'll take a couple more calls inshallah, then we're going to move on to the Holy Personality. Assalamu alaikum, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, assalamu alaikum, what's your name and where are you calling from? Nevertheless, that's no, inshallah. We're going to take a few more calls. You got if you want to win uh, the twenty-five pound voucher this week. Yeah. Easy question: In which surah is the name of Allah repeated in every verse? You've got four options at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you know, if you think you know the right answer, please ring the <coughs> number and inshallah. There you go. We have our caller. Assalamu alaikum. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Assalamu alaikum, brother. Ya Ali Madad. Wa alaikum salam. Shabir wa Islam Madad. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Tahir Abbas, and I'm calling from Birmingham. From Birmingham. I would like to give the answer. Yes, please, brother. What is the answer? The answer is Surah Mujadila. Thank you very much, brother. Um, is there any majlis happening where you are today? Uh, just come back from work, and, and like you know, I'm, I'll go to mosque. Just have a shower, and then I'll go to mosque. It is it program there, yeah, in Osani mosque. Mashallah, fantastic, brilliant. Thank you very much for calling. Inshallah. Your do dua for us, inshallah. Yes, this program is happening all over the all over the country, all over the world. Yes, and um, for our seventh Imam, as you know, there's a program in Manchester tonight and yes, tomorrow, tomorrow. So if you're not aware, ask someone. You can get the information. We have another caller, Brother Hamza. Assalamu alaikum. What's your name and where are you calling from? Have we dropped this call? I think they're going to call again. Yeah, is there, have we got a caller? No, no call. Right, coming on to this week's holy personality. As you all know, we relate the topic to a holy <coughs> Imam and obviously as you all know um, it's the Shahadat of our 7th Imam so we will be um, talking about our 7th Imam but before we show the biography we have another caller Assalamu alaikum what's your name and where are you calling us from? Hello Assalamu alaikum I'm Sagid al from Germany I didn't get the name can you repeat the name please? Hello Assalamu alaikum my name is Sagid al from Germany Sagid al Abbas, okay Abbas from and uh, B Surat al Mujahidullah is right Right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. So now, as you all know, we always relate the topic to holy personality, and as as it's the shahadat of our seventh Imam alayhi salam, we'll um, we'll be talking about our seventh Imam. So if you can please show the biography to all the viewers out there, it'll just come up on your screen, and I'll give you some facts about our seventh Imam uh, alayhi salam. Holy personality, viewers out there, right? The name is obviously Hazrat Imam Musa Qazim alayhi salam. His name is Musa. The reason is that when he was born, uh, Imam Sadiq um, said, uh, said uh, sorry, yeah. Imam Jafar yeah. Sadiq said, look, he resembled the Prophet, uh, Prophet Musa. Mus Moses so as well. There you go. So his name was given Musa. His title is Musa. His agnomen is Abu Hassan, Abu Ibrahim, Abu Abdullah. His titles are Abdi Saleh, Qazim, Babur Hawaij, Sabir, Amin. His father is obviously our sixth Imam, Hazrat Imam Jafar as Sadiq. His mother's name is Hazrat Hamida Khatun, is who is from North Africa. Um, his birthday is 7th of Safar, 128 AH. And his birthplace was um, in, between, in a place called Abuwa between Mecca and Medina. His age was 55 years old when he was Shaheed. 
He was martyred on 25th of Rajab, 183 AH. His um, death place was in Baghdad. <coughs> the cause of death was uh, poisoned by um, tyrant leader Harun Rashid, and his holy shrine is in the city of Ghazman, which is near Baghdad in Iraq. And the reason it's called Ghazman is because there's two Ghazims buried there mm. our seventh Imam and the, our ninth <coughs> Imam as well. So there you go, that's a biography of our 7th Imam, Imam Musa al-Qazim salam. Write this down, learn it as you know, it's very important to know. These are general basic foundation building blocks to know who our leaders are. So if you can memorize this, you can memorize the dates they were born, the days uh, the, the died um, in the way obviously of Obviously having religion. a little bit of knowledge about your leadership because obviously all these Imams are our leaders. Yeah. And I just want to mention a very quick thing while you were reading his biography and you said that Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq al-Islam he gave him the title of Musa because he resembled Prophet Musa. So that, that shows that our Imam or our leader has knowledge of the unseen. Obviously, uh, he wasn't physically there at that time, but he still had the knowledge. Exactly. So he could tell you something that happened hundreds of years before. Although he resembles uh, Prophet Musa. Well, so this is, this is why the leaders that we have chosen in our religion are people who are pious, who are sin free, who are going to lead you to happiness. And obviously God is happy with them and they are happy with God. And they're going to do nothing uh, against the will of God. Absolutely. So when you talk about Imam Musa Qasim, I mean, <coughs> I'd like to talk a little bit about his mm. life as well and a couple of miracles. I was listening to some lectures over the weekend as well, in which he mentioned a beautiful uh, miracle of Imam Sadiq. As you all know, there's a great scholar out there called um, Abu Hanifa. He was a student of Imam Sadiq salam, and he came to his house once to ask a question. Um, on opening the, the when the door opened, he realized it's a five-year-old boy. Obviously, it was our seventh Imam, Imam mm -hmm. Musa al-Qazim. And he said, where's your father? I want to ask him a question. He said, he's busy right now, but you can ask me. He goes, no, no, I'd rather ask your uh, father because he's uh, obviously more senior, he has more knowledge. He goes, no, ask me. He goes, okay. Now, I want to ask you a question. Now, when we commit sin, is it Allah who makes us commit the sin? Is Allah equally... Um, to blame when we commit a sin or is it completely our own fault? And hearing this Imam gives a beautiful simple reply mm. that makes you think, you think this is the knowledge of a five-year-old, five-year-old child. Nowadays five-year-olds can't even eat properly. This is our Imam. Mm -hmm. What does Imam reply with? He says, now if Allah was to, uh, if Allah was the one who made you commit all the sins on the day of judgment, why are we getting punished for something that Allah's made us do? That's true. That's if true. Allah is part of the crime, why are we getting punished for something God is part of? Therefore, it makes total sense that obviously any sins that we commit is our own free will. Free will. I think that's that's the main the main moral of the story. About because God is not going to force you into anything. He has given you free will. That's why we are human beings, and you know that's why we have the ability to think. We have the intellect to make, to judge what's right, what's wrong. And that's why we are responsible for our own actions. Exactly. We have another call. I think we'll take one more call for today. Assalamu alaikum. Who's calling? Where are you calling from? Assalamu alaikum. It's Sanya calling from Manchester. Wa alaikum salam, Sanya. And are you going to answer this week's quiz question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think the answer is Surah Al Mujadullah. Thank you very much you for very your much answer. Uh, inshallah, keep watching. You will find out in the next 10 15 minutes who the winner is, inshallah. Yes, brother. And also, I want to mention the fact that, you know, you know Musa Qazim, why was he given the title of Al Qazim? I think from why, why I've read or why I know is the fact that he was very patient and he's very forbearance. He was in prison for so majority of his life he was in prison, but he was always patient. He was always praying to God and he always was, he always uh, stayed towards the right, uh, right path and he always guided his followers, even though he was in prison. He still had followers and he still had people who believed in him. And he, because of his patience and forbearance, he was given this title of Al Qazim. There you go, brother. I think we have to go and take our last call of today. Assalamu alaikum. What's your name and where are you calling from? Assalamu alaikum. Ya Ali Madad. Wa alaikum salam. Wa Ali Madad. How are you? Oh, for, for, what's your name and where are you calling from? I'm Zaha calling from Leicester. The answer is Surai B. Mujadila. Mujadila. Thank you very much, Zaha from Leicester. Thank you very much. And yeah, Brother Hamza, like you just said, the, uh, the title Qadim means the one who suppresses his anger. The Imam has done this on so many occasions. For example, when someone wants through water in his abar, mm. he said, I forgive you. He does. If that was us, we'd get angry. The <laughs> Imam says, no, I forgive you. There's so many situations where Imam was, except look at the times he was put in prison. He was put in prison in Basra, in Iraq. 
and obviously under the rule of Harun Rashid, it was mm. the worst prison that he was put in. I've actually visited that prison myself 13 years ago, brother Hamza. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you can't even, you can't, I don't even know. I, I was 13 then, I'm six foot now. I was thinking I was about five foot five then. And I couldn't, I had to bend down to go inside the prison. And when you get to the end of it, it's just like a hole. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's not even enough space to, to sit down. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the conditions that our Imam was kept in at that time. Look at his patience. You know what our Imam said at that time? His, his Imam had one, not regret, but one um, desire that I always want to, I want to be alone to worship my Lord. And when he was put in prison, do you know what Imam said? He said, thank you very much. My desire has come true. Wow. That's the patience that the Imam had. That it was his patience that when these guards um, of the prisons, um, when they were ordered to kill the Imam, they used to look at him, that look, this person's always praying. He's so pious, he's so nice. I'm not going to kill this person. Take him to a different prison because I'm not going to do this. That it was his patience that was his main quality, his main attribute that proved um, to be, that proved for Imam to be one of the greatest leaders in the world that has ever seen. That that's again shows the quality of a leader and uh, the fact that God has chosen this divine person. He's given them knowledge and he's given them and he's kept all the impurities away from them. They're sin free and they are going to lead their followers in followers towards the happiness, towards the right path. And that's what we should do. We should be we should follow our leaders. We should try to emulate what we've learned from them <laughs> and implement in our life. Definitely. I mean, I to share another quick miracle of our seventh Imam. Once he was walking past a house. And he heard a cry of a child. Um, he went in, he, he knocked on the door. He was given permission to come inside. He, he saw the child has just lost his mother. He's be, um, become an orphan. So the Imam prayed. He prayed, and the woman came back. The mother came back to life. Wow, that shows the knowledge that he had. Knowledge of first of all, our the power, the knowledge, knowledge. Absolutely, God has given. He, God has opened their chest and given them all the knowledge they need to possess. And I want to give another example. We were, we were, this was, we were discussing a long time ago with me and my friends. Uh, uh, the, at the time of uh, Imam Musa al-Qazim, you know, the, the, the tyrant leader, he sent a very beautiful woman, you know, he said, I want to, I want to you know, put like some sort of stain on this Imam. I want to, I want to you know, show his followers that he's not the right person. So they, they decided we're going to send a very beautiful woman into his into his prison cell, yeah. and so that when she comes out, she can say that you know that this uh, this is not the imam, this is just a normal person like you. And he gave in to all his um, desires. So basically, you know? given to her tricks, to exactly, the, to tricks exactly. Yeah. And they sent this uh, woman in, and when she came out, she came out in a hijab, in a proper. Uh, she covered herself, and she said to all the people out there, "Look, you are not madam to me. Do not look at me. Do not touch me." Look at that. So you compare. This is the. This is our Imam. If you compare the story of Hazrat Yusuf when he's in uh, locked in a room with um, Zulaika, uh, the doors open and he runs out. He's running away. The Prophet's running away. But if you look at the Imam, a beautiful woman is sent to him, and when they walk in, they see her in prostration behind the Imam. Absolutely. And she says that what you said, um, uh, no, no, the all not met him. So look at the knowledge, the piety, the love, the the way he's indulged in the love for his um, Lord. Now that is a sign of a true leader, someone who fights for other people's rights, not looking at their own. So, I mean, I heard his lecture that on the weekend. He said beautifully that in the time of Imam Qasim alayhi salam, there were so many tyrant leaders out there. Harun Rashid was one of mm. them. There was um, Mansur, there was Al Mahdi, there's different leaders out there. They had massive palaces, brother. Mm. Massive palaces. But if you look in history, if you look now, where are them palaces? And look at the shrine of our Imam. Wow. Look how big the shrine is, look how many people come to visit that place. So, does that not show you if you've. Um, that if just you shows the greatness of <laughs> our leaders. That shows that these people are not just you know ordinary human beings, they are divine people that we keep telling. We keep talking about divinity because these leaders that we follow are not somebody that I've picked myself. These these are leaders who have been picked by God Himself, and He's saying, "Look, I've made these people for you. Choose them. They're there for you. They have the knowledge. They have. They are. You know, all the impurities are kept away from these people, and they will take you to the right path. They'll keep you happy. If in times of adversity, in times of anything, go to them and you know follow their acts, and you will you will be you will be saved. So look at our Imam. We're so patient, and through his patience, he. Uh, kept the the name of our religion alive. I mean, look, there was the tyrant leaders of that time. They wanted to kill him so mm. on so many occasions they could not. They failed, 
And obviously it came to that time where Harun Rashid's imprisonment was so bad that he, they just wanted to get this, that you know what, this is enough is enough. And they, uh, in the Maktal books it's written that they put poison in mm. dates of the Imam and he ate that which affected him and he mm. passed away from there. But obviously there's a lot more traditions that mention different um, ways the Imam was uh, tortured. tortured and before he died. I mean, it's, it's very sad, brother. Very I mean, sad. you can't even describe in words what's happened to the Ali Bayt out there and how they've all suffered just to please Allah. Mm. They've given their own lives. They've given more than, they've given everything that they had in their power towards the cause of um, uh, Islam and obviously towards the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why they are blessed that to this day, 1400 years later, we are still talking about them. We are still exactly. worshipping, the, we're still going to their shrines and we are worshipping God through them. And that's why... Yeah, we're asking God for help through them. You've got the Ayat al in which you mention all their names. Mm -hmm. You ask for intercession through them because they are closer to Allah. They've mm -hmm. got that station. Their, their, their prayers will be accepted. And our praise will be accepted via them because they have more closeness, exactly. So that, that's what we do. And all the tyrants of the time who, you know, who, who poisoned our Imam or who tortured our Imam, where are they now? Nobody even talks about them. Nobody even half of them, them. Half of them, no one knows where the graves are. Exactly. But our Aima, look at them, they've got beautiful gra graves. Everyone from around the world goes there to visit them. And they're decorated in times mm -hmm. of they are uh, The flags have changed from the colour of red to the colour of black mm -hmm. when it comes to the times of Shahada. Like now if you go to Qazwan, I'm sure the environment mm -hmm. would be absolutely amazing. Everyone will be uh, mourning for mm -hmm. our Imam of our time, sending their condolences to Bibi Fatima Salam Allah Alayha and obviously carrying out majalis, du'as mm -hmm. on this obviously occasion like every year. Yeah, that's but, true. And that, that's... And that's what we're here to do now and, and it's the fact that it's the, it's the day of the Shahada that we need to remember our Imam and we need to remember that Imam Musa Qazim suffered so much so that we could learn about him and learn about God through him. Exactly, I mean I'd like to end that this on a beautiful hadith by Imam Ali in which he mentions the faithful keeps his grief confined in his heart with a smile on his face. Yeah. So if you look at our Imam, do you think he would sit there and cry in front of his um, companions that look I'm suffering or I'm going through this torture no, no. he would keep that to himself this is why he is known as al Qadim mm. whereas obviously obviously all the sadness and all the grief that the torture that he was put through he must have kept that in his heart brother he was patient he was always patient and he had he had a belief in his belief in God was very strong and he knew that God will reward him and you know he'll, he'll keep the name of this religion Live, alive till today. I mean, th that time of our seventh Imam is after after Karbala was the worst situation mm -hmm. seen in history. Uh, it was so bad, brother Hamza, that anyone who was seen to be a Shia, a follower of Arul Bayt, their heads would be chopped off there and then. They will, they were finding them, chopping them off there to a point where people migrated to other countries. Mm -hmm. Hence, Imam Raza is in Iran today. Yeah, today. A lot true. of a lot of them went to Iran. This is how bad our followers, the followers of Al Bayt, were getting treated at mm -hmm. that time. So obviously, our prayers are that obviously, inshallah, may Allah give us hidayat so we all go towards the right path, mm -hmm. and may it may also we have love and interest for our religion to read upon the lives of these holy personalities, so we can gain knowledge and and hopefully, inshallah, one day bring some of their characteristics, mm -hmm. their mannerisms into our own lives. Because that's the only way, Brother Hamza, we're going to be successful. I agree. That's the whole point of life, and that's the whole point of having and you know following these great personalities, these great divine leaders in our religion. That we try to emulate their qualities, we try to emulate their personalities, we try to follow them in their footsteps, and everything that they've said is for our benefit. And if we can do that, if we can do that in our daily life, then surely you've succeeded. Inshallah, we're going to be revealing the quiz question uh, answer in a minute. And um, before we do, I'm going to recite, carry on reciting the Noah that yes. I recited at the start of the program. So after a very loud salawat. Allahumma <laughs> salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Kera no kisaan si kazam diya kariya je laha dende kera no kisaan si Kazam diya kariya je laha den de Lash mazdura tu chakwai musalmana ne Lash mazdura tu chakwai musalmana ne 
کوئی وارث ہی بلا دیں دے کیرا نقصان سی کازم دیاں کریاں جے لہا دیں دے سال چودہ جد زندان چ گزرے لوگا سال چودہ جد زندان چ گزرے لوگوں جے اگر خو فے خدا ہو دا مسلمانانو دھیاں پتران کو ملا دیں دے کیرا نقصان سی کازم دیاں کریاں جے لہا دیں دے سانیے زہارا نہ رون دی قدی بگدا دون دی سانیے زہارا نہ رون دی قدی بگدا دون دی قیدی ماں میں دے انگوراں دے وچنوں کے نل لوگ جے زہر نہ پا دیں دے کیرا نقصان سی کازم دیاں کریاں جے لہا دیں دے جو گھمِ آلِ محمد چھے روندہ مومن جو گھمِ آلِ محمد چھے روندہ مومن او دی بکشش دلی ای بکی یادے چھے رو رو کے پاک زہرہ نے دعا دین دے کیرا نقصان سی کازم دیاں کریاں جے لہا دین دے کیرا نقصان سی کازم دیاں کریاں جے لہا دین دے اللہم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم میں اللہ اکسیب سا پورسا انشاءاللہ and give everyone the love and mahabbat um, and um, what do you call it, desire to learn more and inshallah go towards the right path for the exactly. and We also send our condolences to all the Mu'minin out there on the day of Shahadat of Imam Musa al-Qazim and obviously send our condolences to the Imam of our time. Right, going to this week's quiz, um, in which surah is the name of Allah repeated in every verse? I mean, it's quite easy. Um, Brother Hamza, what is the answer? The answer is, I think it's option B, which is Mujadila. So let's pick this week's winner. We had a lot of right answers. You pick it this time, I picked it last okay, time. Okay, inshallah. You ready? Close well, your you eyes. shake it. Okay, you have to close your eyes. There you go. And this week's lucky winner is Ali Abbas from London. So congratulations Brother Ali Abbas from London, please ring back to the studio, we need your phone number so we can text you the authentication code to uh, access www.myshop14.com which also sponsors this program. So Brother Hamza, any last words you'd like to say? i just like to say that you have these 12 leaders given by God to all wow. the mankind. Look if, you, if, if you can read more about them, learn more about them and try to uh, you know, implement what they've said into your daily life, then you surely you are on the right path. Fantastic. You have 12 best leaders in the world. So, mm -hmm. like you said, read upon them. So, we'd like to end the program with Dua al Faraj al always. We always want the mm -hmm. um, return of our 12th Imam, uh, Ajr Allah. So, after all, Salat Allah, Muhammad, Wa Alayhi Muhammad. Allahumma kulli waliyika Hujjat ibn al-Hasan Salawatuka alayhi wa ala abai Fi hadhi isa'a wa fi kulli isa'a Waliyan wa hafidha Wa qaidan wa nasira Wa dalilan wa ayna حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد إن شاء الله we'll be back same time same place on Hidayat TV with the H and Z show. Love is love.